Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do this. So, as you can see, not too exciting. There's a little bit of grain animation here in Framer, but when I scroll down, check this out. Very, very cool. So, this is basically a video in the background, and it is tied to the scroll position. All right, so it's a scrub animation. And this is something that's super easy to integrate, although, you know, there's some considerations though in terms of how you implement it um, within Framer. So today, that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do. Let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. So the first step is you need a video. Um, you can actually choose from many different videos that already exist. You don't have to record your own like I did here. I wanted mine to be unique. Um, and this is for a personal project called Soul Pixel. And that is going to be a situation where I'm going to take on new clients for the first time in a very long time um, in basically as a kind of like a no to low code designer and developer and it's kind of just an experiment I want to try. And so I just did some minimal editing here. Um, these, this is in my studio. These are smoke geysers. So I kind of had to create a little bit of a, a light show that aligned with it and also a video projection because this is a big wall essentially and there's a projector that casts this little logo animation called Soul Pixel. And so typically when it comes to these videos, you don't want them to be really long. You want them to be short, just like a few seconds and that is it. Why? Because, well, load time. Videos are obviously resource heavy. So this one turns out to be like three megabytes or so after exporting it with a low enough bit rate, but to also where it doesn't look like garbage. Um, this obviously is the, 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 the version where it's completely uncompressed, um, but the final result is cool. And adding some grain to it can actually help um, make it look interesting, you know, but still kind of hide the fact that, you know, it's kind of pixelated as well. So that's the first thing. You're gonna need a video. And if you don't wanna have to upgrade like within Framer, you wanna host it somewhere. So I have my video, this particular video that you see here, hosted on an Amazon S3 bucket. I will link that in the YouTube description so that you can just use that if you wanna follow along as a matter of practice. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is go um, and go to Framer and we're gonna create a new project and I'll show you how to get this integrated. So new project here. And I'll go ahead and make the background just black. We'll give it a layout and we're gonna hit F to add a frame. So this frame is gonna be 100 viewport height. So for the height, I'm gonna specify 100 VH. And it's also going to be fixed, all right? So this is important. If you don't have it fixed, your video or the container in which your video re resides, then when you scroll down, it's just going to, you know, It'll, it'll get, obviously it'll get hidden from the viewport. So you want it to be fixed. That's the first most important thing. We'll get rid of the fill as well there. And let's see. So we have this and it's position fixed, 100 viewport height. The next thing we wanna do is insert an actual video element from insert media, and then we're just gonna choose video. All right, now by default, they do already give you a video that's just ready to rock, which is fine. And I'm gonna get this centered up, and then what I'm gonna do is specify for the width, 100%, and the height will do 100% as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to actually my version so I can grab real quickly the video URL. And again, like I said, this will be linked in the YouTube description. And we just paste that right here in the URL field. So I'm gonna hit enter, and there you go. All right, so let's hit play. And you can see by default, it's just gonna play the video, which is not what we want. What we want is first, we're gonna specify over here where it says playing, no. All right, so now when we hit play, it's just gonna be set at the very first frame of the video. Now, the next part is where we actually have to integrate a piece of custom code. And I'm gonna go over to my final project and grab that code. And by the way, you'll be able to remix this project right here that we're starting and working on. Uh, so there'll be a remix link, meaning you could just clone it and you could grab that code from there as well. 
So if we go to assets, we have a, and by the way, I didn't create this. I already, I, I Googled this. This exists already um, for scrubbing. So video scroll progress.tsx. So what you want to do is under code, you create a new file and you call it video scroll progress, just like this. And then you paste this stuff in. Just control A, control C, and you're ready to rock. So if I go over here, I'll show you that what that looks like. We just hit code and we're going to specify video scroll progress. It's a new component, hit create, and then control A, control V, and there you go. Now, there are um, just a couple variables, variables sorry, um, that you wanna be aware of. The first one here is gonna be scroll start. Uh, so this is the scroll position when the animation starts. So the, if you wanted to start, you know, right when the person scrolls and this thing is on your hero section or whatever, then you can specify zero. Scroll distance, this one's one of the most important elements and it's just gonna be based on the video and what, you know, so you're gonna have to experiment with this. So this is the scroll distance after which the animation ends. The higher this value, the slower it will take to finish that animation based on the scroll position. The lower it is, it'll go faster. So I found for my video, 1300 seems to be a pretty good speed. You'll wanna experiment with that. So now um, if I hit play and I scroll down, nothing's happening. Why? Well, because we need to give ourselves enough room uh, to scroll down into anyways. So if I just drag this all the way down, you know, something like 2700 or so for the height and I hit play and I scroll down, oh no. It's still not working, but we can see we are scrolling. The reason it's not, and this is a classic rookie mistake that I just made, is you have to select your actual video element. So if we go back to layers, we see video is selected. Then we have to go over here to code overrides, and I'm going to specify, sorry, I can't really see it. For some reason, it's off my screen. You can see right down here, video scroll progress. That's the file. We want to choose the actual function video scroll pro progress. Now we should be able to hit play. I'm going to expand this and there we go. Now, one thing I don't like about this is it's not smooth because naturally the default behavior of your scroll wheel within, you know, the browsers essentially is that it stops immediately. So for this effect though, for it to have a really nice smooth sort of uh, effect where it animates and it's based on locomotion, then you can use the smooth scroll plugin. So, or it's a component rather. So if I go back to my other project and I go to layers, you'll see right here, I have smooth scroll. We're gonna copy that. And by the way, if you go and type framer smooth scroll component in Google, I'll try to remember to link this. Framer University, you just click on this and then click copy component and then just literally control V and paste it in your layers. So now if I come over here and I just paste this anywhere, smooth scroll, watch this. I'm going to expand this. Now it has a, a much better feel based on the scroll wheel position. All right. And that's basically how you do it. <clears throat> and so what's cool is if you had another section underneath, let's say we have a section here and we'll just drag this down and we'll say that this particular section, um, we're just going to make for now, um, hundred percent there and then a hundred viewport height. And I'm going to, um, just duplicate that one actually. So we have one underneath it directly. And so now, if I put in maybe some type here where it says testing and then I make it white so that we can see it and really make it larger, we'll hit play. Now, is it going to show up underneath or not? Okay, so it's showing up underneath it. So in that case, we need to adjust the Z index value of the frame that holds this element. So we're going to put that at zero. And let's see if that helps anything. Nope, we still don't see it. So this element, um, well, actually let's scroll down and see at the point at which we were able to see this thing. Okay, so we're not able to see it at, at all. Um, in this case, let's take and take frame and put it above. Hit play, there we go. 
So as you could see, just like the regular flow of a web page, you can time your animations in your next section uh, based on the height and you can also add in different effects like your, your scroll speed. That can help you really adjust when this thing shows up. So if you want it to show up slower, you can specify 80% for this section and now it shows up in a more timely manner in that type of context. And if you want to really give your your project some grain, essentially, um, because maybe this looks a little bit too pixelated, you can see some banding in there, you can actually kind of hide that and kind of create a cool little effect. If you go to Framer Supply, and you'll see down here you can grab this component that has animated grain. So hit Copy, we'll go back, just hit Paste, and now we have this grain and we could specify 100 per, oops, not that. There we go, the 100% for the width, 100% for the height, and then let's get this uh, situated back up, zero, zero. Now this isn't too intense, like you can't even see what the heck is going on. Fortunately, you can adjust the opacity. So something like 0 0.1 or even 0 0.07. Now if we hit play, we have this nice little filmy sort of situation occurring here uh, and it looks really good and so yeah that is just a quick demo of how you can do video based scrub animations very simply within framer and not having to touch a single thing now for those of you who want to learn a lot more about framer definitely check out my upcoming course from figma to framer and you can take it right now i uh, for 40 percent off if you use Figma 2 Framer, where we do stuff like this and a lot, lot more cool stuff starting from the ground up within Framer. So definitely check that out, and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.